My name is Michi Shinohara, and I'm with the University of Washington Traumatic Pathology. I want to give you some tips and pointers on rating melanocyte atypia, uh, in particular, how do you look at atypical nevi. Some key points, rate atypia as a marker of the overall melanoma risk for a patient, not the risk of that individual lesion turning into melanoma. We are trying to rule out melanoma, of course. The majority of clinically atypical nevi are histologically atypical, so it's not unusual that a lot of the nevi that we see coming across our desks in dramatic pathology are atypical. Architectural disorder generally trumps cytologic atypia, although we obviously take both into account. And we are super inconsistent at rating atypia. There is very poor inter-rater uh, reliability. A word about words, dysplastic nevus, Clark's nevus, kind of old terms. Uh, at the University of Washington, we use this grading system based on NIH consensus um, terminology, which is melanocytic nevus with architectural disorder and X degree of cytologic atypia. We use mild, moderate, and severe. Does this even matter? At some institutions, they don't do this at all. It's either benign or melanoma. Um, but we biopsy dysplastic nevi, obviously, to rule out melanoma. And there is data that patients with more severely atypical nevi are more likely to have a history of melanoma. So there is some uh, risk stratification available to patients with the, that data. Before we jump in and talk about um, different types of atypia and rating atypia, let's talk about what is an atypical. This is an example of a nice congenital benign nevus um, showing kind of a nice symmetric wedge-shaped appearance. Let's look a little closer at the epidermis. And here we've got uh, some nest at the tips of the reedy. Um, there's not a lot of bridging, and the melanocytes in the superficial portion appear uh, plump, they appear nested, and as we go down deep in the dermis, they disperse between the collagen bundles and back, showing that the melanocytes are indeed getting smaller, and that is a sign of good maturation or dispersion with depth. We can rate atypia and melanocytes based on architectural features, as I mentioned, or cytology. We're going to go through those a little more. And symmetry, clearly, uh, we know about that. It's, you know, two halves not being the same. Let's talk about the others. Papillary fibroplasia is a thickening of the collagen in the superficial papillary dermis. Um, really just right under those reedy, you can see it visible on H&E. You don't need special stains, just that thick, wiry collagen. Bridging between reedy is where you get joining together of uh, adjacent reedy with atypical melanocytic nests. You can have even horizontal nesting. Here's a closer look at that. And then shoulder phenomenon is where you have a compound melanocytic proliferation and your junctional component extends far beyond the dermal component. So in this example, here's our dermal component off to the right and our junctional component just sort of keeps going, that's a shoulder. Lentiginous or confluent growth um, is where you have uh, crowded melanocytes where, which are forming um, a marching along line without any space between them. There's no keratinocytes between these. It can be single or nests. And pagetoid spread is upward extension of single or nests of melanocytes above the dermal epidermal junction. And generally, the higher they go, the more worrisome, with some exceptions. Lack of maturation. So this is an example of a nevoid melanoma. And this example, you can see there are these large atypical nests that extend the span, the breadth of this lesion. If we look at the cytology at the top of the lesion, here are these melanocytes, which are large, plump epithelioid, and at the base, they're almost indistinguishable, so that it's not maturing. Those melanocytes are not getting smaller with increasing dermal depth. Cytologic atypia. We can rate the degree of atypia based on the nuclear size, uh, with more severely atypical melanocytes having larger nuclei and more dispersed chromatin and visible nucleoli with the classic people descript descriptor of melanoma being that melanoma has these cheery red nucleoli. In more severely typical melanocytic proliferations, there's more abundant cytoplasm versus scant. Here's an example of a very um, mildly atypical melanocytic nevus, uh, mostly junctional. Maybe there's a, a couple uh, dermal components there, but showing some nests at the tips of the reedy. There's a little bit of fusion between reedy. And looking on higher power, we can see that these melanocytes are uh, about the same size, maybe a little smaller than the neighboring keratinocyte. So this would be mild cytologic atypia. Here's one that's a little worse, more moderate to severe, showing more extensive fusion between reedy, some extension down the follicular epithelium. 
higher up look showing that these melanocytes are spindled and, and that there are some visible nucleoli. When we take that to the extreme of melanoma, you're gonna see multiple nucleoli, dermal mitoses, more significant pleomorphism, and then something that Dirk Elson likes to refer to as the peppered moth appearance of nuclei. And on the bottom right, here's our peppered moth in the upper pane. This is um, a melanocytic um, nucleus showing that chromatin just kind of all broken up and, and dispersed in that peppered moth pattern. So to sum it up, clinically dysplastic nevi are predictors of melanoma risk. That's why they get biopsied, and that's our job, um, is to tell people it's not melanoma. Um, we rate atypia to help estimate the risk of melanoma, but we're not very consistent. Do your best. And the grading of dysplasia in itself is controversial. It may be the secondary predictor of risk, but um, we need to agree upon some better criteria. So thanks for your attention. I hope I was able to teach you something. <laughs>